Hello everyone and welcome back to part 6 in this coloured pencil series, How to Draw a Dog. Uh, today we're going to try and finish the fur on the face, see how far we get and then we can move on to the ears and stuff next time. So let's get started. I'm not going to need too many colours in this, in this video, um, mostly just going to be using ivory, burnt ochre and maybe a couple of others. So should be fairly straightforward compared to the last one. The mouth was definitely one of the most complicated parts. So, just gonna get started. Um, going to use ivory, just rub this little bit out here. And I'm gonna use ivory as the base. I hope that you've enjoyed this series and that it's not been like too long or I hope it's been helpful. Um, let me know what you'd like to see next because obviously once this is finished I'm going to be a bit lost. I don't know what I'm actually going to do so yeah let me know what you'd like to see next and then at least I can film something that will actually be useful that you want to see. I really enjoyed doing this series. Oh, it's taken me a while because I, I only filmed this in between doing commissions and stuff so I wish I could do it every day and then you have all the videos at once. Uh, right, now I'm going to use Burnt Orca and I'm just going to start adding in those details. So there's a bit here where there's like a, a fold I'm just going to add that in, really light little strokes. Just gonna leave a little gap here for a whisker so that that is like one long whisker. Just gonna have a bit of shading around it. The good thing is now once we've drawn all these features like the eyes and the mouth this bit is fairly straightforward it's just connecting it all together oh, thank you for all the really nice comments as well on all these videos I've been doing I had a few nice messages on Instagram as well yeah it's really nice glad that it's actually helping people I've had a few people saying that they like the format of the video, like done in real time rather than with the voiceover and stuff. So I think I'll definitely stick to doing that kind of format. I think it's more helpful. I did um, have somebody suggest to put the photo of the reference in the corner of the video and I, I don't know if it, it would cover up too much of what I'm doing, I don't know. I can give it a try though and then obviously if it doesn't work I'll, I won't do it again but let me know what you think about that because um, it, it probably would be helpful wouldn't it to see like a zoomed in bit of the photo like the bit that we're actually drawing. I just worry that you won't be able to see enough of what I'm doing. I don't know, let me know. <laughs> hmm. 
a little bit patchy. Just gonna redo that bit. <laughs> Doesn't always go right first time. If you want me to do another series like this, like focused parts in different videos, let me know what animal you'd like me to draw. I did have a suggestion of a hare. I love. I have drawn a hare before, and it was really fun. So, could do that. Or another dog. Whatever you want. Oh, I've not taped the drawing down properly one minute. <laughs> right, I'm just going to extend that base colour to the edge. So I do like to sort of add definition to each edge of the drawing if that makes sense. So make this bit darker. And I'm just going to start adding in the details with burnt ochre here. So I'm just going to press on quite hard the little strokes upwards. And then it goes in like this kind of direction. So I'm start adding these in. Sort of drawing upwards instead of downwards on this bit. Like that. And there's a little whisker there, so I'm gonna make sure to keep that in. Just for a bit of detail. Sort of draw around it. I do find burnt ochre quite a difficult colour to blend. It does go quite patchy quite easily. So if yours does, don't worry too much. Mine does as well. <laughs> there, slightly darker bit. Sort of doing like backwards and forwards motions as well. Like a few strokes down and then a couple back up. Just building up that fur texture. I love drawing the fur, it's so therapeutic. Let me know as well, which has been your favourite bit to draw? Like, did you enjoy the eyes, the nose? Like, which bit do you like to draw best? I think I like to draw the eyes best. That's my favourite bit. on a bit harder to add a bit more depth there. Always just following the direction of the fur on the picture. There we go. 
and just going to bring it down a little bit more about those pencil marks but again just leaving them really faint so I can still sort of see them a little bit I'm just going to use burnt ochre uh, no ivory <laughs> not burnt ochre the base Like that, and then just carry on with burnt ochre. This is a fun part because this is where it all starts to come together now. Not just like separate little features, it's all becoming one, which is good. I'm doing those little like triangle sort of shapes again here. See what I mean? Like, like that. Just gives a really natural sort of fur texture. Good trick that if you want to get like a a bit of a natural shape to the fur. Draining that those little bits up. Using those little sort of triangle shapes here as well. Just go like that way and then that way. It's like a few strokes that way, a few strokes that way. It creates like a a little triangular sort of shape. <laughs> I've maybe done this bit a bit too big, but it's all right. Not the end of the world. Bring it up a bit. Here I'm just using my pencil to sort of like follow that whisker so I'm leaving a gap in the right place. I can see it a little bit where the pencil mark is but I might have done it slightly in a slightly different place on there. There we go. Adding some more first drops around it. Adding a few more darker ones here.
There's not too much to explain on this other than just following the the direction of the fur. So it's the same sort of technique, just slightly changing the, the positioning of your hand to get the direction right. That's pretty much all there is to it. Because it is just the same colour all the way around. Some dogs it's like a different colour all over so that would be a bit harder. She's in ivory again. And then it's gonna carry on hanging this down. It's sort of like it starts to go in this direction at this side. that colour off there. I have messed the proportions up a tiny bit but it doesn't matter too much. If it was like a commission I'd make sure to get it perfect but just because it's a, a tutorial and it's like a practice as long as it looks right it doesn't matter. Doing slightly longer hair strokes now on this bit. Just connecting these bits together. That's the only thing about filming, there's a pressure to do it right first time and it doesn't always happen. I do find that with drawing fur, the faster I kind of like do the hair strokes, the better and more natural it looks. Like if I spend ages like trying to get them perfect, like it just I don't know, it never looks as good. Sometimes you just need to like go for it and just do it really fast. So sorry if I'm going a bit fast, it's just it never looks that good if I don't.
you do need to like pause the video at any point please feel free don't think you have to try and like keep up at the same speed What I might do um, is a study, like a, a tutorial focused just on spaniel ears. So not draw the whole spaniel, but just the ears. Because I know a lot of people do struggle with that, getting the right texture and stuff. And I love drawing spaniel's ears, like one of my favorite things to draw. I think you either love it or you hate it. <laughs> That could be an idea for something to do after this series. So I'm going to add a bit more definition here. Yeah. Pressing on quite hard. Sort of lost the end of that whisker a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter too much. You can have a bit of like artistic license with it. It doesn't have to be exact. As long as it looks right on the drawing, that's all that matters. <laughs> I was doing a live on um, Instagram with Amy McKim. Um, if, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'll leave my um, details down below. And she was laughing at the way that I say drawing, because <laughs> of my accent. I do say things quite funny though, to be fair. <laughs> I don't know, it just seems normal to me, drawing. <laughs> love to know where everyone's from that's watching. If you're from the UK or maybe somewhere else, I don't know, I'd love to know. Hopefully if you're not from the UK you can understand me based on my accent. <laughs> right, I'm just going to move the camera up a little bit now. Right, there we go. And I'm just going to carry on with this bit here. Same again, ivory. I do press on quite hard with ivory, so it's nice and creamy looking. And burnt ochre, just going to rub that out a tiny bit. And just carry on.
just join in together all these little bits of fur here. people ask about a Patreon as well and I, I don't know if I'll do that maybe one day I don't really have a lot of time to do it at the minute because I'm not technically not full-time doing this still part-time and I wouldn't want to um, have people paying monthly and not be able to provide enough content I'd feel really bad so for now I'll just carry on putting free tutorials on YouTube so at least you'll get them, get them for free instead of paying but yeah I just one day hopefully I'll have enough time but for now I'll just have to stick to YouTube ones. I thought about maybe doing like courses rather than Patreon, I'd do like um, a full course that you can just pay a one-off payment and like have it on my website or something that might be a different a different way of doing it and then I could film it all in one go post the full thing rather than doing like a monthly system I don't know I want to make sure that like what I'm making is good enough quality. I wouldn't want to put something out there for, that you have to pay for that's like substandard so I'm a bit of perfectionist. <laughs> right I'm gonna use a nougat. My pencils are all like really small now <laughs> um, and I'm just gonna start adding a bit more depth here. Pressing on quite hard. There is a little bit of like a greeny tinge as well which you don't have to put that in that's like optional but it does add a bit of a a nice like bit of dimension. This is the thing with drawing pet portraits, it's quite um, objective, is that the word? Sub subjective, I don't know, It you, you can change things or put things in or not put things in, it's like totally down to you really. Subjective, I think that's the word. <laughs> If you don't have a colour that I'm using, you could use something else to try and like get a similar look, but yeah, it's pretty, um, you can uh, change things or improvise. Obviously it's easier if you do have everything and then you can follow it exactly, but Enough people might not have every single colour or whatever. Right. There. Just going to add a few more down here. Cool. I might just move you up again. <laughs> there we are, hello again. And just going to do this top bit now. Um, so, same again. For about. And ivory all over. Whew. 
I'll not do it right to the edge. I'll do that afterwards. Because I don't want to smudge them pencil marks and I don't want to rub them out just yet. Like that. And burnt ochre. Ooh! Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like we're a spider but it's a bit of fluff off my jumper. <laughs> oh god. Right. I'm just gonna carry on really lightly this time. It does get a bit lighter at the top here because of the the lighting in the picture. So I'm just gonna extend these bits up a tiny bit. I'm also like curious to know if anyone's actually done the whole series of this or if you just sort of catch little parts just to help you with drawing other things I don't know I'd, lo I'd love to know like how you use these tutorials because obviously you can take like techniques and apply it to your own work or you could literally draw the whole thing from start to finish with me. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm just gonna add a little bit more detail here. really really lightly just adding these strokes now I haven't even sharpened this pencil yet that's how lightly I'm pressing <laughs> don't think I have anywhere no. Right, I'm not going to add too much in now because it's very light on the picture and sometimes you don't need to do fair strokes all over the whole the whole base. You can leave it. Yeah, I'm going to leave that for now and I'm going to do this bit here. It's going to faintly rub it out. You can still see it a tiny, tiny bit. Gonna... It's quite handy if you have like a little brush just to get the dustings off. This brush is actually from a bronzer that I've got that I didn't need the brush for. So I'll just use it for this now. <laughs> just get all the bits off. Okay, to add the details. Again, those little triangular sort of fur strokes. Sometimes I hold the pencil slightly differently depending on 
how hard I'm pressing or like which bit I'm drawing like now I've got it quite tight holding it quite tight and it makes a difference to like I didn't applying the pressure and stuff so because I've got quite a firm grip on it it's much easier to press on harder darker towards this right edge so I'm just gonna add some darker little patches of fur press on a bit harder towards that right side probably finish that bit off in the ear tutorial so I'm just gonna fan it out a bit so it's more blended I'll do then I'm going to start on that top bit yeah I'm going to just really faintly rub that out then what I'm going to do is use a really um, sharp ivory. I'm going to sharpen it. There we go. And I'm just going to start drawing the fur like I was with the burnt orca rather than just colouring it all on in one block. Just sort of feathering out those fur strokes towards the top of the head. more natural. Some longer ones, some shorter ones, just sort of varying the length of the fur. Oh, broken. <sighs> Following the direction that they're going in. Just going to that out a bit more. It's going to be probably quite hard for you to see this because of the weird light and keep going in and out and stuff and it's quite pale but hopefully you can sort of gather. do because you can't really see the edge that much. I'm going to just sharpen burnt ochre and so it's really sharp and just start adding in some really fine little hairs. Pressing really lightly. just to add a bit of definition so you can see where the drawing actually ends just like the odd little hair Like that. 
and it is a little bit more defined here. I'm just going to add a few more hair strokes coming down. And a little bit more here. And actually, I'm just going to add a few more little strokes here, really, really faintly. Like so. Just gonna add a few more here as well. Sometimes it's not till you've drawn a bit more that you go back and think, mm, that needs darkening up. Create a little bit more of a contrast. There we go. That's better. Just a bit more in there. Tiny bit more on this little curved line. There we go. Tiny bit more here. There we go. And add a few more strokes. Then a few more here. It's slightly darker on that little bit there. And there's like a tiny little patch that's a bit darker there. And there. Right. Then I'm going to do this bit. So same again. Very faintly leaving that. Setting a few more little hairs and colouring that bit in. Like that. And same again. Just start adding in that burnt ochre. Sort of like adding some hairs going in different directions here. Like crisscrossing over each other. There are a few little like whiskers that I can see here. Not whiskers, but like, I, mean, I think they are actually. So I might draw one or two of them in. And do this one here. Let's just draw around it. And 
this one. Like so. And then I'm just gonna add a bit more ivory to the ends. Little hairs. Smudged a bit there. And just gonna carry on. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't, don't think you could actually see that. Um, I'll do it this way. Carry on. Adding those little hairs in. Just gonna do it to about here. So I'll leave these for next time. like so then I think I will just darken it up a little bit tiny tiny bit um, here with nougat just needs a bit more definition I think a few little of them triangles Um, and then do the same at this side. Sometimes it's hard to do it without covering it up. <laughs> so you can actually see it. Probably um, define that a little bit more when I do the ears, but for now that'll do. Then I'm just going to add a few more hairs to the top of the head. For a bit more definition, a couple more in the middle. There we go looking good and a bit more to the edge here to connect that dark a bit to the face doing those little back and forth motions again Add a bit more shadow in. And I'm just gonna a bit more definition. Sorry, but I lost it a bit now. Just 
on that eyelid and this bit. in as light as possible. I'm just going to add a few more here to blend it together. go too far with that because we'll do the ears next time so I think we are done for today we'll do the ears and then the neck and then the body and then we'll be done so I hope that you've enjoyed this video again um, and yeah subscribe for the next part thank you for watching <laughs>